Hello, welcome to this online information session on certification for career development practitioners in Ontario. This session has been prepared by the Career Development Practitioners Certification Board of Ontario. For those who are not able to attend a live information session or who want to hear the key points again after attending a live session. I'm Diane Moore, a member of the CDP CBO Advisory Committee. As you listen to the information presented here, please make a note of any questions that you have. We'll provide you with a contact email address at the end of the session and a link to the CDP CBO website for more information. Please keep your speakers on throughout this session. This session is designed to answer any questions you might have about certification. We have three main goals for this information session. First, to provide a brief history of the certification model, how this process was initiated, how the model was developed, and what the benefits are to certification. This will be covered in slides 3 to 19. Second, to explain the components of certification and the various criteria required to obtain the Certified Career Development Practitioner credential. This will be covered in slides 20 to 29. And third, to identify the next steps for you to pursue certification, which will be covered in slides 30 to 35. In total, this session will take approximately 30 minutes. You can pause the presentation at any time and come back to finish viewing it later. To give you a brief background on how the certification developed, the first standards and guidelines were developed for career development practitioners in the 1990s by people who deliver services and programs across Canada in this field. A full history of the development of these standards is available on the website of the Canadian Council for Career Development, cccda.org. Once these standards were developed, they were rolled out across the country and used in different ways in different provinces. Interest in exploring the establishment of certification began to grow in some provinces and ultimately was established first in British Columbia and Alberta. As interest began to grow in Ontario in exploring the establishment of certification, a forum was held in June 2011 of approximately 100 career development practitioners working in a variety of sectors in the field. They were asked to vote on whether certification should be established in Ontario. This group voted in favor of pursuing certification. Following this, a stewardship group made up of practitioners from different sectors was elected. This stewardship group took on the task of surveying practitioners in the field to determine if certification was desired and to identify the kind of components that practitioners would like to see contained in the certification. A survey was distributed widely throughout the field and there were 321 people who responded with feedback on whether certification was desired and if so, what its various components could look like. Here are some of the key results from the feedback that was gathered from that survey. The results from the respondents showed that 92.5% felt that certification is essential, very important, or somewhat important, and were in support of the idea of certification being established in the field. 82.6% said that they wanted to be valued and recognized more as a profession. And just over 50% felt that obtaining a designation, such as a Certified Career Development Practitioner, would contribute to that recognition. One of the questions posed on the survey was whether the certification should be voluntary, not necessarily required of people working in the field, or mandatory, a requirement to work in the field. There was somewhat of a split in the results, showing that 47% felt it should be voluntary and 40.2% saying it should be mandatory. At this time, the certification is voluntary, as it is in most other provinces across Canada that currently have certification available. A majority of respondents, 91%, agreed that some experience related to the field should be required, with only 8.4% of respondents saying no experience should be required to gain certification. 
Nearly 70% of respondents felt that related education should be required and that there should be mandatory course requirements. However, please remember that these are just the survey results that were used to prepare a preliminary draft of the model. We'll be talking later in the session about the different pathways available to gain certification. So, if you do not have any formal or related education, there is still a way for you to gain certification through your experience. A grant parenting option was considered for those who have worked in the field for a number of years, but who have no formal education. 80% of survey respondents felt that it would be important to provide a grandparenting option for people who had extensive work experience but perhaps had not had any formal education. However, you'll see when we get to looking at the requirements in a few minutes that rather than offering a time-limited grandparenting option, as previously noted, people who have worked in the field for a long time can get certified based on their experience. In addition, just over 76% of respondents also felt that there might be some value to having different tiers of certification to reflect different levels of experience, such as a new graduate working in the field versus someone who's been in the field for many years. However, at this time, the Ontario certification is offering just one level for all those who want to become certified. Upon completion of this survey, the Stewardship Group did extensive research on existing certifications for career development practitioners in Canada, the United States, and internationally, and combined that research with the preferences expressed by practitioners in the survey. A draft model was prepared, and practitioners were invited to provide feedback on that model. Once the finalized draft model was prepared, the next step was to select an organization or group to take on the role of implementing the model in the field. Interested organizations and groups were invited to submit an expression of interest. From those submissions, the Stewardship Group selected the Career Development Practitioners Certification Board of Ontario, CDP-CBO, late in 2014 to take on this important role. The CDP-CBO is a not-for-profit organization led by Gillian Johnston, Gail Takahashi, and Susan Petit, who have over 80 years of combined career development experience. A volunteer advisory board was formed and a pilot project for participants was held in February and March of 2015. Applications for certification opened on April 1st of 2015. The first certifications were issued within several months and have been ongoing since that time. It's important to the CDP-CBO to ensure that the certification meets the needs of practitioners working in a wide range of settings and that we get input from all sectors. So the advisory committee is comprised of members of provincial career development organizations and members of the former stewardship group. This includes the Canadian Career Information Association, CCIA, One Step, First Work, Career Professionals of Canada, the Ontario Association of Career Management, the Institute of Career Certification International, and Career Life Skills Resources. In addition to establishing certification in Ontario, the CDPCBO is part of the Canadian Council of Career Development Certifications Working Group, a pan-Canadian group that is monitoring the establishment of certification across Canada. The group has developed harmonization of certification across the country so that we will be certifying the same things and in mainly the same way. We also are working on reciprocity between the provinces so that certification is recognized, allowing more mobility for practitioners who move from one province to another. The national document outlining the full agreement between provinces is on the CDPCBO website and there's a link to that website on the final slide of this presentation. There are many benefits to certification for career development practitioners. Here are just a few. First of all, it establishes you as an expert and innovator in the field consistent with the national standards and guidelines across Canada. Certification also confirms your mastery of critical professional competencies and recognizes your professional development and growth.
It also demonstrates to clients, peers, employers, and funders that you use industry-respected best practices. Certification can also set you apart from the competition to give you a competitive edge professionally. So, for example, if you're applying for a position or a promotion, the person reviewing your resume and those of other applicants may see you and another applicant as equal in every way, except that you have the certification and the other person does not. It's likely that having the certification would give you an edge for that promotion, for a new position, or anything else you're trying to achieve in your career. Also, the process of achieving and maintaining certification demonstrates that you are continually improving and refining your practice. The certification does require recertification every three years, so in order to achieve that recertification, you will need to demonstrate that you're continuing to learn and grow and develop as a professional. There are also benefits to our field in achieving certification. It raises the bar for our field, demonstrating to employers, funders, policymakers, and the public that our work is grounded in professional excellence. It operationalizes the competency standards and ethical guidelines established through the National Standards and Guidelines, defines our scope of practice, and supports quality service delivery. In essence, certification reassures employers and the public that the work we're doing meets the ethical guidelines and standards and that they can count on consistent service and quality from career development practitioners. There are also several benefits of certification for employers and funders. Certification can help employers to differentiate between different candidates that they are considering hiring. From the employer's perspective, beyond considering an individual's experience, Employers can also assess their knowledge and interest in professional growth and development. Certification can also help with targeting staff training and professional development. Those who are certified will engage in an ongoing process of evaluating their training needs, and employers can connect with these training needs and make plans for training their staff as individuals or as a group. This helps demonstrate to funders and other stakeholders that your business and practice is run professionally in accordance with the ethical standards and guidelines across Canada. Having certification available to career development practitioners also gives the public the opportunity to make an informed selection of services based on the knowledge and training demonstrated by certified career development practitioners. So, it gives the public confidence that the career development practitioners they are working with meet the standards for ethical practice and quality of services. At the Connexus 2016 conference, there was much discussion from keynote speakers and in other sessions about the need for us to define our profession. A CEREC survey in 2015 reported that half of Canadians who responded wished they had sought career advice and guidance before making life-changing decisions. This suggests that many people in the general public are not aware that there are specialists who are able to help them with their career decisions and job search needs. This indicates that our profession needs to raise its profile so that people who need services in this area are aware of where to find qualified professionals to help them. Certification is one way to do this. As we have delivered information sessions and responded to emails, we have found that some practitioners have themselves not been able to identify that they are career development practitioners. They do not see themselves as part of a distinct profession that encompasses many different occupational titles. Recognition through certification will help us to pull together as a profession with a common focus and a common identity, despite our differences in job titles and sectors. This will also give us a stronger voice and clearer image with both policymakers and the public. Through ongoing discussions with the Pan-Canadian Group, we've continued to examine the certification model in Ontario to ensure we are consistent with the national agreement. As a result, 
there were some amendments to the Ontario model that were approved by the Advisory Committee in January of 2016. These changes will ensure that Ontario's CDP certification model, as it's amended, reflects the National Harmonization Agreement. We'll continue to monitor developments in certification in other provinces to ensure we remain harmonized on a national basis. Let's look now at the certification model and the pathways and steps to achieve the Certified Career Development Practitioner designation. There are five pathways to achieve certification. Four of the five pathways combine both secondary education and experience, and the fifth pathway is based fully on experience. Pathway A requires a related one-year post-secondary certificate with a minimum of 200 hours of classwork or coursework, plus 6,400 hours of related experience in the past eight years. Pathway B requires a two-year post-secondary diploma with a minimum of 400 hours of class work or coursework, along with 4,800 hours of related experience in the past six years. Pathway C requires a related three or four year post-secondary degree and 3,200 hours of related experience in the past four years. The fourth pathway, Pathway D, requires a related master's degree and 1,600 hours of related experience in the past two years. And the fifth and last pathway, Pathway E, is the employment pathway. This pathway requires that you be currently employed in the field with 8,000 hours of related experience in the past 10 years, of which 4,000 hours must be in the past five years. The hours of experience needed are designed to account for downtime between contracts, maternity leaves, working part-time, and so forth. Of course, practitioners who are working full-time will be able to reach the required hours faster than those who are working part-time or who have breaks between contracts. Here are some additional important points to be aware of in selecting the pathway that you would like to apply with. Post-secondary education in a related field includes, but is not limited to, social sciences, humanities, and education. An applicant with an unrelated degree would need to demonstrate that 6 to 10 courses completed are relevant to career development. Examples would be psychology, sociology, education, counseling, and social work. If an applicant holds multiple sources of related education, the highest educational credential will be used to calculate the number of hours of related experience required. Education must be from a government-approved or authorized institution in Canada. If education was completed outside of Canada, an equivalency document through ICAS or WES must be provided. If you have an educational credential and are uncertain if it's related or unrelated, please contact us at the email address on the last slide of this presentation so we can assist you with making that determination. For work experience in a related career development field, at least 50% of the hours must have been paid work. Up to 50% of hours may be completed through other unpaid work, for example, volunteer work, job shadowing, work practicum or placement. The hour count is based on 50 weeks per year and 28 hours per week, which equals 1,400 hours per year. This formula accommodates those who work part-time or short-term contracts. Practitioners who work full-time will calculate more hours. This formula is meant as a minimum. There are two required courses that all practitioners must have completed if applying for certification. This is consistent with certifications established in this field in other provinces. These courses are, first, an ethics course that is a minimum of 10 hours, and second, a career development theory course that is a minimum of 20 hours. These do not necessarily have to be separate courses, but the courses must be from an approved educational or training institution. There's a list of these institutions provided on the CDP-CBO website.
If you've taken a course through an institution not on your list, you must submit a course outline in addition to the required transcript showing successful completion of the course. You might also apply to an approved institution to receive prior learning assessment and recognition. This would mean that you do not have to take the courses through an academic institution, but would complete documentation and might, for example, provide work samples or other documentation to the institution to demonstrate that you have achieved the equivalent of these courses through your work in the field. The academic institution through which you would apply for a PLAR would be one that is offering the Ethics and or Career Development Theory courses, and you would look at their policies and procedures for achieving a PLAR with them. Once completed, they would issue you documentation to verify that you have completed the equivalent of the required courses. If you've been approved for PLAR for either course through one of the approved institutions, CDP-CBO would accept the PLAR. The documentation you provide in your application must demonstrate proficiency in the four core competencies plus two of the six specializations, your choice of any two, from the Canadian Standards and Guidelines. The core competencies are professional behavior, interpersonal competence, career development knowledge, and needs assessment and referral. You can find more detailed description of each of these competencies at the link provided on this page. You can demonstrate how you meet these core competencies in your work experience, education, or training in several different ways. First, you may be providing direct client services related to career and or employment. In other words, you're working directly with clients on a day-to-day -day basis, providing services directly to them. Alternately, you might be providing indirect client services related to leadership and or research in the career development field. This might apply to someone who may be in a position of managing or providing education to career development practitioners, or conducting research relevant to the field. These individuals would qualify for certification, provided they can relate their experience and education to the competencies and specializations in the same way that someone would who is doing direct client services. Applicants must provide evidence by writing a description of how each of these have been addressed through work or documented training. Supporting documentation must be provided where possible. For example, this might include documentation from supervisors, co-workers, course descriptions, course evaluations, work samples, job descriptions, a curriculum vitae, etc. There is a long list of choices and samples available on the website to show you what kind of documentation you might provide and there are videos available to guide you through the process of compiling your documentation. We'll provide links to the first of these videos at the end of this video. As part of the application process, you will also be asked to select two areas of the six specializations that are part of the Canadian Standards and Guidelines for Career Development Practitioners and to provide supporting documentation for these specializations as well. These areas of specialization are assessment, facilitated individual and group learning, career counseling, information and resource management, work development, and community capacity building. There are also some shared specialization competencies that appear in more than one area of specialization. Additional information you'll be asked to provide will include three references, confirmation that you have paid annual membership dues to become a Certified Career Development Practitioner and to maintain your designation, and descriptions of other relevant training you have completed. The series of application videos provided on the CDP-CBO website will lead you through the completion of all of these sections of the application. It's our goal to keep the cost as reasonable as possible for those who want to pursue and maintain certification. With that in mind, the initial certification fee is $225 plus HST, and the annual membership fee for Career Development Practitioners Certification Board of Ontario is $15. 
The recertification process is currently under development. Recertification is necessary to demonstrate currency in the field and commitment to maintaining high standards of service. Requirements and fees for recertification once established will be communicated directly to those members who hold current certification. If you're ready to begin the process of applying for certification, your next step is to visit the CDPCBO website at cdpcbo.org. Download and review the certification criteria document and the application form, which can be found under the drop-down menu of Certification Ontario. View the first video in the series on the home page to get an overview of the application. Take it one step at a time and focus on completing each section separately, following the instructions and suggestions in the application videos. There are a number of sample applications available on the website that will help you clarify what information is needed and give you examples of how to fill in the sections. Email us through the link on the home page anytime you have questions. Our aim in offering the certification is inclusion, not exclusion. Career development practitioners will be recognized through certification as a distinct profession working in the field of providing career and employment services to help seekers. This is not a general certification for anyone in social services, but is designed specifically for those whose work encompasses the work performed by career development practitioners with the necessary competencies. Those who work in complementary professions may be certified if at least part of their work is involved in the sphere of career development. So even if you are not called a career development practitioner, employment counselor, or similar title, if you are providing a great deal of career and employment support for clients, you may qualify for certification under this model. Those in private practice are also included and should include their preparatory hours as well as their direct client contact hours in calculating their total hours. In these cases, you may not have a direct supervisor who can provide a reference for you. So, in this situation, we'd like you to contact us so we can determine who would be best able to speak to your skills and competencies. It's important to note that there's no time limit on the education or training. So if you obtained a related degree, diploma, or certificate some years ago, this would still be relevant to the certification. In future, there may be some adjustment to the model to reflect the need for pan-Canadian harmonization and, of course, to meet individual and profession needs as things change over time. If you're not sure if you fit or how you fit, please contact us. Don't not pursue certification and make assumptions that you would not qualify. Contact us and ask your questions so we can assist you with how you can pursue the certification. As you prepare your application, we encourage you to enjoy the process of reflection on your achievements. While there is some work involved in this process, those who have completed the certification, including myself, have felt a great deal of satisfaction at the completion of the process in seeing how much we have accomplished in our career. The application package can be downloaded at www.cdpcbo.org. On the main page, go to the Certification drop-down menu and click on Ontario, then click on Application Package. The website offers detailed examples and videos to help you with preparing your application, so please do take a look at those as they will provide you with a lot of help in putting your application together. And again, please contact us at any time with questions. We do hope that you will join us for this exciting phase of development in our profession and that you will consider certification. Again, our web address is www.cdpcbo.org. You can also email us at info at cdpcbo.org. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. And again, please feel free to contact us anytime with questions. We look forward to hearing from you and assisting you with taking this important step in your career as a professional career development practitioner.